Hello and welcome to The Night Shift. I'm your host, Liv Ting. Tonight on The Night Shift Podcast, Ting Kai sits down with SUTD Fitness and a special guest. Go big or go home. Have you started on a new year resolution to get big? Well, if you haven't yet, don't worry because today, Productions and Fitness Club have come together to give you a very special episode to tell you how you can achieve that new year resolution today. So today with me, I have Edward and Ho Chin and we are going to share with you how to get big. Alright, so I am currently the Vice President of the mm. Fitness Club. So the main aim of bringing this podcast to everybody is to, if I know that everybody has a New Year's resolution, so if us want to get fit, so of us want to lose weight and stuff like that. So <coughs> the main aim of this podcast is to bring seasoned athletes over to give talks and like basically disseminate information to everybody. So you not only can we learn ourselves, but you can also learn and it will aid you in your journey for it. Mm. So right now, we currently have Ho Chin right here with us. My name is Ho Chin. Uh, yeah. I have been a competitive bodybuilder ever since 2017. So uh, I tried out like categories like men's physique. And then mm. uh, currently now, I recently have competed in a WFF sports model champion. Mm. Oh. So I'm also a personal trainer. Uh, I usually coach clients that are more lifestyle and also mm. clients that are actually keen on going for bodybuilding shows as well. Okay, okay. So actually, what is the WFF Sports Model Pro? Okay, so uh, WFF is like a federation. So mm-hmm. in bodybuilding itself, there's a lot of federations that are being uh, spread out. So for me, myself, uh, I personally like the category called Sports Model. Oh. And it's actually very popular in like WFF because like if you are intending to compete like overseas, I think they have categories like this can actually let you shine. Ah, uh, okay. yeah, sure, okay, okay. So, I, we can see that you're actually the owner of Kaizen Fitness mm. and Kaizen Pro. Okay. What made you choose to create such a branding and team? Okay, so for Kaizen as its own, uh, if you guys know, it's a group of people that wants to continuously develop like their thoughts, their, on like how they can personal develop better, mm-hmm. right? So... Kaizen, if you can think about it as a whole, it's more of like the internal thoughts. But yeah. with fitness itself, you combine both the internal and external of the well-being mm-hmm. together. And why Kaizen Pro? I always feel like people who are lifestyle clients who actually want to push themselves a little bit more. And that's mm-hmm. where we actually push the clients to like a pro category where they push oh. themselves to be an athlete in the bodybuilding show. Okay, yeah, so that's that's the general category. Idea. So is it uh that is purely for bodybuilders lah? Uh, for guessing. the pro, for yes. the pro, yes. Correct. Are there recreational bodybuilders there also? Like people who just want to get fit, can they join Kai Kaizen? Oh uh, wow, this is a good yeah. Class. But usually, uh, for people who engage me to be their coach, as uh, when they are going competition, mm. then because we are already aware that their goal is to be a bodybuilder in that show, then. Mm they will be the pro. But I have never classified someone who just want to gym casually to be in the pro, pro category. Um, um, but probably if you are a potential athlete, maybe in the near future, then maybe I would have thought about that before. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So actually, just curious, how did your journey actually start? Like, when do you start get so interested in bodybuilding? Okay. Mm. So, um, I started off as a basketballer. But I wasn't the best basketball player <laughs> when I was in secondary <laughs> school. So across the process, when I went to poly, I realized that that wasn't what I could be in because mm. I trial for like the RP school team. I used to be mm. from uh, Republic Poly. Then I knew that I have a characteristic for fitness, which means that I'm quite, I am good in endurance. I can run fast. Mm. So I went into track and field. Oh. And I managed to be in the school team but I'm not like the main runner. main runner yeah. so my uh, my events were 200 meter and 400 meter run so at the end of year 2 uh, transiting to year 3 I realised that um, with the gym experience I had with my coach I thought maybe I make myself look a little bit bigger mm. yeah so mm. I transit into just training in the gym not really as a bodybuilder so that's where I actually experience and see like wow how come some of the guys in the gym Looks yeah. quite good, eh? Right, right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Maybe I want to be a... My goal, my goal one day. <laughs> <laughs> my goal. I'm still thinking I can do it. Maybe I don't want to be <laughs> so small. Because yeah, I was actually yeah. quite small. I was 66 kg. Yeah. Now I'm uh, 83. 83. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. 
total is 66 kg is small. I'm like 62 oh, yeah, yeah, kg right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even smaller. I'm 75 kg. Let's go. Oh, even think that is bigger than me. Wow. Well, because of the height. Yeah, yeah, and the height. Because of the height. Yeah, yeah taller. I'm taller. Short I'm taller. kings rise up. Short kings rise up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so um, after that, uh, before army, I told myself maybe I think I trained for like two years. Maybe I look good. Mm. I engage a coach. Then the coach actually tell me that okay, let's prepare for a show. And the show is really like pure novice. So like people that are new. Mm. And I went in, uh, throughout the process. I really like how it was like. I think uh, maybe later I cover a little bit. On, okay, uh, on my journey. Then from there I told myself okay, maybe this is what I really want, and people can actually gain the experience from this. So that's why I went on to this like uh, bodybuilding sort of journey. Um, and then when was the first time that you actually went for the competition? Uh, it was, I, I was 21. So I think six months later, I was about to enlist. So wow. that was where, yeah. So I tell myself, okay, I want to look the best ever. Because I think when you're younger, or back in my time, mm. our knowledge for nutrition and training mm. is not as advanced as now. You don't get like TikTok, you don't get like uh, YouTube. Uh, knowledge people will tell you just train very hard just eat a lot of protein <laughs> and then, great, bam, great, then great. you look a certain way yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so that was the era that I was in of course uh, I am very fortunate to meet uh, the coach that mm. sort of guided me so my first show was in 20, when I was 21 mm. it was 2017 so it's like 7 years ago right 7 mm, yeah 7 years, years. 7 years ago before. correct then uh, fortunately uh, I also Landed uh, first place for that show. Say, wow, <laughs> first time, first place, already. Guys, first but, time, first time. Again, yeah. I have to highlight that uh, bodybuilding is a little bit of hard work and luck. Okay. Yeah, so it's a lot of hard work and, and luck. luck. Yeah, correct. Because you never know who your opponent are, but you always have to bring in your best. I mean, that's correct. in life, uh, basically. Mm, true. Yes. Life lesson to everybody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I think moving on. So we know that you're a personal trader. Mm. Then you started Kaizen Pro. I know that there's multiple athletes under you too. Mm. So what exactly got you into personal training? Personal training, uh, okay. So I guess it started off where I we started off with the first competition prep. Yeah. So number one, uh, that was where I finally got to learn how nutrition is being utilized. Of course, I don't really know what it means at that point of time, but I know that. By having a stricter or having a more disciplined mindset when you are going through this whole process, it develops you as a better person. Like, number one, like at that point of time, if you think about it, if you go for a competition, you're not going to get money or, no. or what huge sum of uh, cash that's, give, that's deposited into you, right? But if you think about it, right, when you are chasing that goal, right, and you are following that level of strictness, the reward that comes after it is something that no one can achieve. Uh, yeah. It's like really? when you diet, as you're dieting down, you see that, okay, maybe your skin is getting better. You're putting in more effort when you're sleeping. Yeah, then you can feel that, hey, your recovery is doing better. So all the sacrifices that you make, right, is be- being well worth to uh, contribute to your body. Yeah, which is something oh. that is priceless. Yeah. Yeah, then at the end of it, when you step on stage and you win first, for example, you see that, wow, the effort that has been done is really well worth it one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then from there, I realized that, okay, from this journey, I want to bring this value to people that are trying to make a change for themselves. Maybe not as strict as me, but maybe they know that, okay, by putting in this effort, they can get a result that they probably have never seen in their life. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. I think what you said, like, hits home with a lot of people that compete also, especially those that have to diet. Mm. So, like, for myself, since I competed, in my first bodybuilding show in like year one of SUTD if I remember and well, the last two weeks leading up to the show I remember I had to cut carbs it just like plain chicken breast mm. with no salt and nothing mm. and just black pepper and then the cardio was like one hour mm-hmm. and then I remember clearly I think it was the second last week where I felt sick mm. oh. and I had a high fever but I couldn't take Panadol or I didn't want to take Panadol at that time because mm. I was afraid that the Panadol will affect the gains. Yeah. Okay. Does so it, I just does it actually affect. I, I, I don't really think so lah. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> if you're sick, you should. Five <laughs> 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 to recover. Oh, no. 
you heard that everyone <laughs> it was six <laughs> senior doctor but yeah I was just so scared of it ruining my physique that I just I just like slept inside my room then kept drinking water until I tidied it over mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. not fun uh. yeah so building on to like his point right if you think about it he could have like taken the Panadol or like went to eat like comfort food but because the heart to win and the discipline is there he decided to like persevere throughout because there's no boss there's no teacher there's no parents that's telling you like hey you must do this and do that it's really all in the mind so that's why I really appreciate like uh, people who are very consistent and disciplined yeah mm. to meet their goals not just like physique itself Mm-hmm. Mm, I agree, I agree. I think for myself, it was really like because before I, after I came up army, right? Like my mm-hmm. army life was so chill, so I became fat. Uh-huh. So, like, afterwards, I decided to like do one month transformation video because I'm also like a YouTuber kind of. So, I make videos for fun. So, I have a few fitness videos here and there, but I don't publish it because okay. I'm a bit shy about it. Mm-hmm. So, like, at the start of the 30 months, like, I would just do like a one month challenge where I like try to diet a bit and then after that work out more consistently so my workouts can go up to like two hours that kind okay. every day four times a week then I'll try to go for runs mm. and I really see the difference afterwards of although course. like yeah it's like so fulfilling although yeah. like I have to like sacrifice a bit oh I want to eat McDonald's cannot eat mm. but afterwards like so I understand it's like although I'm not like professional but mm. eat my no own la, food time yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone can the... be on their own lane ma, but yeah, yeah correct, whatever correct. you say also makes sense mm. yeah, because you really tell yourself this one month I need to make this happen correct, and correct. you like uh, and you like completed it yeah mm. if not like you could have eaten Mac then yeah, the correct, correct. Then, then, then go up. Yeah, then you'll be the same. Uh. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you decided to commit to yourself to that. Yeah. So also the it's it's also a good thing. Yeah. You don't need to be a boy builder. La, so. Okay, correct, correct. <laughs> respect, so that's respect. like everyone over here. Remember? <laughs> just do it. Don't think. Just get ready. Yeah, yeah, achieve yeah, a new year goals. Quite true. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Hey, achieve your new year goals. Oh, I thought you yeah. say a <laughs> achieve new is good to go. Achieve new is good to go. Hold on, that did the English but yeah. Okay, okay. So I guess okay. moving on, mm-hmm. we can talk more about your competitive experience yes. so far. Okay. So I think. So let's start with the very first one, which is your FIF Pro. Okay. So I think everyone has to understand, right? Like going for a competition, right? It's not like starting for an exam. Every single round is a very different prep. So uh for my FIF Pro first show uh to be a sports model, uh this was where I injured my knee when I was doing uh, lunges, which the show was supposed to come like one month later, but I delayed it. So what happened is I was doing lunge, walking lunges halfway, then suddenly my knee kept top. Then I had to like lie down and then I thought I could walk, but I couldn't at all. Then it was raining and uh, my friend was with me. Like, then he cannot even carry me because once I, I told my ACL before, yeah. So I cannot bear weight with my right foot. Oh. Yeah. So my friend cannot even carry me properly because I really need the crutches to press on both arms. Or maybe two person can help me. I have to call my fiance and then she has to bring the crutches down. Yeah. Then oh. she can then I can walk. So uh mm. I prepared for the show for like I think four months. Mm. But because of that one month, uh because of the injury I had to like wait until I can fully walk before I compete in the show. So I thought like, oh shit. I wasted that opportunity. Yeah. So I have to re-prep myself for another two or three months. Yeah. Yeah. So um fortunately, because of the additional three months, I feel that I actually look even better than when I tore my or injured my knee. This yeah. Cool. And and it was a very positive experience because based on the first show I competed against that, I can tell the difference is like at least maybe uh thirty or forty percent. Oh. Yeah, so very fortunately, um, that show was like after COVID. So uh, they're very nice. Uh, mm. they, there wasn't a lot of crowd. And then uh, I also, again, quite fortunately managed to get first place. Now nice. yeah. again. Wow. First place. Don't say, <laughs> say, say, say again. Yes. So yeah. how many first place do you have already? Uh, it's four. a good thing. Four. Yeah. How many do you compete in? Six. Six. Yeah. Wow. So usually, uh, actually there's a story to tell. Yes. Like, um, for like the recent show in Singapore, we call it WF Singapore, right? Uh, so Edward was there uh, yep. shooting. Shit. I was the, the photographer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm someone who don't really like to lose. 
Yeah, mm. so that's why every single show that I go for, I really put in at least 100 to 120% effort. Yeah, which was the Singapore show. Yes, so all along, I like, if you are someone who is a bodybuilder, you always feel that, hey, I always look very good at year 2022. Then you tell yourself, okay, maybe year 2023, I just have to be around the same weight. Yeah, because that's mm. what, like, exams train you for, uh, you want to look about the same as your previous one. Yeah. But that's not the case. Like, sometimes when you see how your opponents look like, you might have to go lower or you might have to go higher depending on the ball game. Oh. Yeah, so it's a little bit complicated. Yeah, so uh, for the WFS Singapore, that one was like one of my toughest, toughest, toughest prep. Yeah, okay. because um, I had to get my butt or my glutes striated. Oh. Yeah, it means the butt must have the lines one. Yeah, and oh, that was I like, remember that. Yeah, because like if you talk about like human anatomy, right? Yeah. Uh, usually the first to lean down first is from your top yeah. and coming down to your bottom. Mm. And if there are parts of your butt holds the most fat, so yeah. that's why if you want need to get like the most striated, it's very, very hard. Yeah, so I still remember uh, there was once when I was in the gym, someone helped me to capture a picture or a video of my glutes. Yeah. Then when I finally saw the like some striations, right, I broke oh. down on the spot. She... Yeah, I cried in the gym. Was that the moment you were like, this is it? Yeah, this like, is the I best. Said, this the... I, I did it really. Yeah, this will oh. be the best look that I ever brought on stage. Nice. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I think Actually, how does I just how does a preparation stage look like? So the bulking and then the cutting, how does it look like for you? So like in that four months of prep, do you bulk cut bulk cut or is it a bulk 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 then cut? Okay. So uh for me, right, I have never done a bulk that is okay, I I guess a lot of people does it very differently, but I have never bulked to the state where I'm like eighty six or eighty seven or eighty eight before. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So usually I will put myself in my bulking state, I will make sure that I'm like about 12 to 15% body fat. So maybe around the range of 82 to 84 kg, which I can still see some form of abs or around more visibility in the abdominals. Then from there, uh, maybe we say we about uh, a total of 20 weeks. Okay. Mm. From that 20 weeks, I will transit to this phase called a maintenance phase. So this is where I actually reduce the carbs a little bit. Uh, I reduce the fat intake a little bit. So this is where my body fat levels will start to be brought down. But I'm not in a state where I am very tired. Uh, yeah. So it's, this is where I'm starting to lean down, but it's not like a cut immediately. Mm. So it's more of like stabilizing, letting my body uh, get comfortable with this state called the homeostasis. Sometimes when you go into a cut immediately from a bulk, your body gets very stressed and it gets the two very easily. Uh, oh. So maintenance phase maybe can last between four to eight weeks. Then after this maintenance phase, this is where I go into a Cut. cut yeah so how does a cut feel like for you like the food that you eat uh even I, I guess it's a habit that I have ever since 2022 for my first show uh I know not every coaches will encourage this but I usually eat the same food all the way eat the same food all the way yeah so like my breakfast lunch dinner or my four meals I usually only eat the same food unless oh. like people ask me to go out then maybe I will add in the food that I'm supposed to eat but usually I don't like, uh, like mm, distance away from the food choices that I choose. Mm. Yeah. So it's like standard. It's like um, chicken breast, uh, fish or beef. Yeah. Then usually I'll just play with this tree staple. I don't usually change to like, uh, maybe I, I have clients that like to eat like um, sea cucumber or like <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> Shrimps, I think, okay, shrimps more common. Yeah, shrimps, yeah. So they, mm -hmm. they do that as their protein sources. Okay, yeah. okay. Or lamb. But I don't usually touch this uh, food choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then I will just cut every week then. As I'm cutting, then I will increase my uh, cardio output. So, example, the food. If you're eating too little food, but your body needs it. So this is where you actually push your cardio up. Yeah, so to mm -hmm. allow the fat loss to continue to process, uh, to, to progress. Understand. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, it's one of the main reasons why you don't like change around with your food options and eat some of the same food every day. Is it because of consistency? Because it's easier for you to, in a sense, track the calories since you more or less know what you've been eating so far? Uh, yes. Uh, so, I'm someone that can consider as a little bit lazy where I don't like to cook so many different varieties. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, <coughs> How I know I'm that lazy guy is 
during my days when I was working in a corporate job, so uh, every morning, right, okay, this sounds disgusting, uh, but mm. I always eat uh, oats with honey and a can of tuna, which is water, water-based water tuna. Oh. Now, I'll eat that for like two years. I didn't <sighs> even realize that. Two years. I never even changed my breakfast choice. Yeah, for <gasps> two years. Yeah, so that's where I know that, eh, actually, I won't get sick of food easily, right? And you, you literally can feed me anything. Yeah. Whoa, two years. Three years of the same food. Oats, yeah. honey, and canned tuna. Breakfast lah. For breakfast lah. Nice, but nice, you human. Human. <laughs> <laughs> oh Still eat the tuna and everything. But the oats is, I would think it's cooked, right? Like the wet kind of oats. Is it overnight oats? No, no, no. It's the no. hot water. Oh, okay. The, what, well, even more raw one. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that one oh my bad. gosh. Yeah. That was like me, a lazy one. Because you see, you wake up, you yeah. just hot water, you boil water, then you just like, chew, 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 then you just put the honey, then you just put the tuna. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is uh, macros that I want, la, so no complaints. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was sense. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. La. The end justified the means. Then. Okay. La. Maybe so, we can go on to share about. Yeah, so, maybe to back down to me and Ever, right? I'm a more of a casual gymmer. What? Ever is a professional gymmer. So maybe we can. Well, not really professional. Now he's professional. He's more. I'm not professional. More qualified. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe for our next segment, we can talk about our different gym schedules and gym routines, and then maybe we can see how we can improve and see whether we can achieve our goals or not. Okay. Yeah, and then maybe Ho Ching can give us some advice on that. Yeah. So the first one yeah. up is Tsing Kai. Yes. So for myself, I my goal is really to be aesthetic and to be lean. Mm-hmm. And I for myself, I usually go four times a week. Okay. Yeah, but currently, I feel like I don't really... I'm not really improving that much because mm. I feel like I usually do 8 to 12 reps but I want to push mm. but I, I usually get comfortable so mm. I will and then when I push I don't really I'm not sure how to push also mm. yeah because I'm really comfortable so I'm thinking how can I challenge myself to go up okay yeah so maybe mm. this is just the mindset issue oh <laughs> <laughs> ah. hey, no, I just blaming him already yeah, I, I, know. Know. Oh, I understand I understand I, I know I should don't worry <laughs> Men just got caught out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but maybe this is my workout schedule thus far. Yeah, so I usually do one day of chest, shoulder, triceps, and then I do two days of back, biceps, and one day of legs. Okay. Mm. So, and then I try to do cardio also. I usually go for a 2.4 kilometer run, or I'll dance, like, I mean, did okay. did Yeah. Oh, is that a promo for <laughs> a fitness club? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, based on your workout, right, can I say that your primary goal is to build overall size? Or is there like a goal that you're looking to to build? Build overall size. Okay. Yeah. So uh one flaw that I would say for this uh trade or actually two flaws are maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, one of the flaws is okay, for example, if you are you are looking to build overall size, right? So if I'm judging based on this workout, you can tell that, for example, your chest, shoulder, and tricep is actually one of the lacking component, right? Oh. Uh, because you are only training one time a, a week. Yes. And in terms of your back and bicep, you're getting two, and for your legs, you're doing one. Yes. Okay, so maybe one of the ways that you can improve your training program is to increase the frequency of the body part that you, that you're targeting. So for example, your chest, shoulder, and tricep I think that day itself is fine. But for mm. your legs, right? Mm. Maybe if your legs are not your priority, right? yeah. maybe you can remove some of the exercises from legs and you can implement more, for example, chest or shoulders exercise into the leg. The leg day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So half of the legs is portioned to like your chest, shoulders and tricep. Oh. Or if not, um, you can have a chest, shoulder, back day, mm. and uh, chest, shoulder, why not? The way I put it, like, very quickly, like, <laughs> yeah. very, very long. <laughs> I think <laughs> those people who don't <laughs> gym will know about it. Okay, so the second one is, you can have one back day, you can have a chest, shoulder day, mm. and you, ha- you can have a chest, shoulder, and back day. Mm. So you split the two days into one. And then you can just focus solely on your legs. Okay, legs okay. Uh, so maybe the goal is to just spread out more so that I ensure I do it more frequently rather than just one time a day. Yes, correct. Okay, okay. Because like, 
if you think about it, right, chest and shoulder is two major component of your body. But if you mm -hmm. were to just put it in one day, then I feel that it's a, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, higher, okay. more frequency when you're doing it across the week. It's like, yeah, picking up a skill. Yeah, you're practicing it a little bit more often, then uh, the skill will develop better. So it's quite similar to how muscle hypertrophy works as well. Okay. Yeah. Then in terms of your cardio, I think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not really like a workout day, right? Yeah, it's, it's not. It's just a exercise, go yeah. for a casual run, yeah. dance, it fresh. Which is, which is good, lah, because yep. uh, I think it's important to implement some form of cardiovascular exercise in your day-to-day -day life. So mm -hmm. going for a 2.5 Going for a two point four run can allows you to get the IPPT goal, right? Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. So there's Money. also more benefits. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. And then the dancing is to show off to to to, to myself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We gonna show up. Personal go. Ah, okay. What? Showing what? shots out there. <laughs> correct, correct. But I think yeah. this yeah. I got a question. Yeah. So like, there's I don't know whether this is a myth, but it's been talked a lot between like people who gym. If you do too much cardio will it affect your muscle gains or let's say will it affect your muscles in general? Okay. So if you think about it as a whole, I'm not going to put in too much science base to confuse everyone. Mm. If you're comparing between a person who runs a lot, maybe a, a, a marathon runner and a person who goes to the gym a lot. Okay. So if you're doing a running quite often, your body yeah. actually adapts to more of a running look. If you think mm -hmm. about it, as compared to someone who goes to the gym a lot, then you see that, oh, this guy has a specific like muscle build. Yeah. So the body is actually a very, very smart uh, product. No, it's a very adaptable product. Which means mm -hmm. to say, example, uh, I can give you my case study. It's last time I'm a runner, right? So I have to eat additional food and to train extra harder to put on a little bit more muscle size. Mm -hmm. But when I transit to just doing more um, bodybuilding, uh, sorry, going more to going to the gym more often and doing more walks, right? Mm -hmm. It was easier for me to build muscle as compared to running. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right in a sense. But of course, if you are doing a lot more cardio and you're still training in the gym, then you probably have to increase your uh, calorie intake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to ensure that you can continue to put on more size. So there are athletes that are like what we call cross hybrid athlete, hybrid athlete, hybrid athletes. Yeah. yeah. So they, so they are also able to manage that. But you can easily see that um, their whole their their daily lifestyle. For example, in the morning maybe they go for a five quick run. In the afternoon they go to the gym to train. Yeah. Then maybe at night they go for a run again. But their expenditure for food is very very high. Maybe like easily eating like three to four thousand mm. calories a day. Yeah. Okay. Let me also. I guess that brings me to my next point. Is there a difference between, let's say, choosing to run or walking on incline for cardio? Because, mm -hmm. okay, for a bit of context, because mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be doing 20 minutes of incline walking okay. on a treadmill with, for my training plan. Mm -hmm. Don't be me. Sometimes I choose to run instead. <laughs> <laughs> so is there, is there a significant difference between choosing to run, let's say, like 10 minutes to burn off the same amount of calories that I do for incline walking? Okay, so I think this is also another misconception that people always have is that uh, everything is by numbers, right? Like I run 10 minutes, I get this amount of calories and, and if I'm eating like that, means it's a direct, um, like I minus off like that. Mm. But that's not the case. Yeah, so I think the misconception is that by running more, you can lose more fats. But it's not really that like you're losing more fats, you're losing more weight. So you're burning both muscle and fats together as a whole mm. yeah so there are people who are uh, who often runs if you realize um at, at the neighborhood okay not to say there's anything wrong they are trying to build a healthier lifestyle but because if you're constantly running right like i said before your body adapts and once you are stagnant at a certain weight then you'll plateau there and maybe in the future uh, we call it a metabolic adaptation la. then maybe in the future your weight will go up because it's so used to this amount of cardio that you're doing, you actually have to increase the duration so that you can lose small weight. Oh, no. yeah. wow. so, so that means... That's why, so that's why uh, why walking is the best. is because walking is stress-free. Uh, this is something that I always promote to my clients as well. It's stress-free and you get to like improve your cardiovascular health. As well. mm -hmm. and you don't need to worry about like stressing yourself by running, pushing, putting a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah, losing fats is actually a very um, stress-free thing. 
Yeah, but it just comes with time if you are doing it right. And mm, okay. And mm. makes sense. Okay. Maybe just to add on to my other concern just now, it's like, let's say, because now my, I actually try to do 8 to 12 reps of each. Okay. So, when do I know that I can go to the next week? Or when do I know, or how should I segment? Because if I'm training for aesthetics, what I heard like, is that I should do 8 to 12 and then make sure that muscle really gets the most growth. But then let's say if I want to push, like when do I know how, when do I know to push? To the next level. Yeah, correct. Okay. So, this is uh, what we call progressive overload. Mm. Yeah, so... 8 to 12. Example, if you are doing uh, dumbbell incline bench press, yeah. you are doing 20 kg. Have or not? No. 15 kg. 12.5. Okay, 12.5 kg. He's himself, man. Right? <laughs> 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 I'm just asking. Don't worry, don't worry. There's nothing wrong. Everyone has to start somewhere, so it's okay. So, 12.5. 12.5. Yeah. Okay, so if you are doing 12.5, for 12 reps. Yeah. Okay. And if you the, the total amount of sets that you're doing is 3. For yes. example. Then, how do you know you can bring up to the next level is that you need to make sure that for these 3 sets, mm. maybe like a, a 2 minutes rest, you can ensure that you hit 12 reps. If you can hit 12 reps for all these 3, mm. then it's time to actually bring up to 15 kg to start with 8 reps for 3 sets. Oh. Yeah. So you can use this as a you can use this as a gauge to like improve your lift. Okay. So one indicator that you know that you are getting, that you're building a little bit more muscle is that your weight for your training is increasing. Mm, yeah. Mm. So okay. Um. Other than that, then I think you don't need to. You don't need to worry about like how many reps you should really do. Yeah, understand. It's more of the. Uh, but it's more of uh, how you base off the number. Because I think yeah. a lot of people, when they train, they just choose the weight that they want to do. So they don't really monitor, mm-hmm. like, uh, for the subsequent weeks, uh, what weight are they carrying. Because I think that plays a huge part in, like, putting on more size as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll go and try it. Because I realized, like, usually my aunt is, like, constantly, like, at the same weight. Chow, chow, Yeah, okay, chow, 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 chow. And I will try this thing. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> now I know it. Now I know it. I'll go and try Later it. Later we'll try 15. Okay. <laughs> Later we'll try 15. I think one good thing to add on is that if anybody wants to like gym and wants to see themselves put on size, I think it would be good for them to have like a notebook or like maybe a notepad for them to note down like said weight. Like maybe this is the weight that they're doing for the specific reps. Mm. And then when you go for their next session again, they can look back at it and go, okay, this is like, let's say I do 15 kg for 12 reps. Mm. and I know that okay my next session I'll do maybe 15 kg for 13 reps mm. and stuff like that I think it's good to keep track of what you're lifting also yeah, than just right. the topic process yeah I, I think yeah I, I agree on this point like you have a tracker so you don't really like go to the gym and train endlessly mm-hmm. but again depending on your goal yeah. Yeah. because there are some people <clears throat> if they do the tracking right then they feel very stressed they're like wow I come to the gym want to relax eh? then I need to track yeah, so again, it's really dependent on uh, each and uh, each individual on what they want. Yeah. Okay, mm. sounds good. Do you want to? <laughs> do you want I to have... bring a notepad? I don't know. I think I have. I have. I check in Notion. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. This I know. Oh, I constantly check oh, okay, by five, check okay, by okay. five, check by five. Yeah. <laughs> Can hire Ho Chi over here. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> kind. Do six months. <laughs> six months. Six months. Six months transformation. Then come back. Okay, that's a goal, that's a goal. Zinkai 2025 takes competitor. Wow. Oh. Okay, okay. Maybe now we can talk about Edward's one. The professional one. Yeah, the pro- no, not professional, not professional. Okay, tell us about your workout. So basically, I'm planning to compete again this yeah. year. Woo! And wow. to get a good place. <laughs> Demon so Eddie. for those oh, who are wondering why Jimbis. Ochin seems a bit sarcastic. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I'm not sarcastic. I'm not sarcastic. <laughs> Ochin is my coach. <laughs> my yeah, yeah. trainer. So yeah, so my current frequency for trading is five times a week. And the problem that I feel right now, I think it's something that a lot of people feel also after a while, is that they feel that they are not gaining as much muscle mass as they thought they would. Mm. Especially like, I this is a very bad example. Like when you look at TikTok and Instagram, mm. and you see like these guys, they do their transformation videos. Mm. And you see study six months, holy shit. They're like big. Mm. And then you look at yourself and you're like, how come six months and I'm still like, like, cute lah. Cute lah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, bro. I'm blushing already. <laughs> but yeah, like you still look like a, I guess, Nail. small, uh, yeah, nail. Okay. With okay. minimal improved ones. Okay. So yeah. 
Okay. Thanks, coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you will see the workout, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> please don't be scared when you see this workout. Yeah. So for, uh, at this workout, right? Uh, something different compared to, uh, Jing Kai's workout is, he doesn't have as much volume on mm. training intensity compared to yours. Yeah. So for Eddie, right? If I'm not wrong, uh, he mentioned that he wanted to compete in a bodybuilding show. So when I assess him based on his physique, right, he has to build everything overall. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> the whole physique itself need to be elevated. So it's not just one single component. So for example, like for a seasoned athlete, right, uh, maybe a cross training like five years, six years. How many years are you training already? Well, I think it's only one and a half. Yeah. With consistency. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm. So for athletes that are training like five to six years or even seven years already, there are parts that they are more dominant in. For example, uh, some people have a very huge back. So instead of doing back uh, on a daily basis, mm. maybe they can cut it, cut the volume a little bit lower. They can focus on chest or shoulder. So that's where they can see the most improvement. But like for yourself, you need to elevate the whole physique first. Because you see, you're only training... 1.5 years and <laughs> comparing to a lot of people training like 1.5 years to 3 years um, I feel that you have improved quite a bit yeah because if you actually should actually put uh, like uh, how he looks uh, please don't please don't <laughs> sure sure <laughs> before, <laughs> <can't> have, uh, <laughs> so, before that I still remember uh, when he showed me his pictures he actually looked a little bit more scrawny yeah a bit <laughs> smaller when he was on stage but comparing to now, of course, you can't see it because there are a little bit more water and fats that's covering it. But, but if you're looking at the progression of the weight that you're able to push, uh, the amount of training you're required to push right now compared to last time, you you realize that, hey, actually, you have changed a lot. But of course, uh, like what you said, because of social media, how it's being drafted. If you see like social media, right, you don't know like how long this guy is training. That's mm-hmm. one. Then number two, this person is like a, like an elite genetic, right? So maybe one out of 100,000, but just nice you land, you saw this guy's TikTok or Instagram, then you would be like, wow, this guy's super impressive. Right? But can you imagine the 100,000 or 900, 899,000 people that has already posted their progression but it's not shown to the world. Mm. Yeah, so it's because of that one person. He inspired you to train harder, but also at the same time, I think it makes you think whether you're doing things right or wrong. But again... There's no like special techniques, yeah, right? You just have to train hard, eat properly. The results will eventually show one. And it comes with time, lah. Yeah. Okay. So, like based off his workout, right? Yeah. You realize that uh, there are more varieties as compared mm. to yours. Yeah. Yeah, so for example, like exercise programs like this, right? You need not do like four sets or five sets, which some people might do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you want to build on to a variety training program like this, you can work between two to three sets. Two to three sets each. Each. Yes. Okay. Of course, uh, this does not consist of your warm-up sets. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, right. the top sets. Okay. But again, it depends. So for example, if like there are exercises like barbell deadlift, maybe if that is the focus that we want to have, then maybe he will require to do like uh, four sets of mm-hmm. that. Then maybe the remaining of the exercise will actually be lesser set range. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think for those that are wondering how scrawny I was, I was originally like, I think 61 kg. And then I cut all the way to 52 kg. <laughs> so it was like 52 kg of muscle. So that's... The people... kg of muscle? That's what I hope. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Doubting me? Oh no. I have to bring up the pics. <laughs> but, A little uh, editing in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but comparing with like people that were younger than me, I was indeed, I would say, my muscle mass was indeed one of the lowest of mm. everybody's there. There was a guy that I think was 18 years old, and his muscle mass was more oh. than mine, and yeah. I was like, okay, that's it. Mm. <laughs> that's a competition. Yeah, so yeah. that's the thing, all, like, I feel that in anyone's fitness journey, uh, try not to compare yourself with others, because yeah. that is the destruction mm. in your mind, because you feel like, oh, <clears throat> shit. How come this guy is like bigger than me? This guy is like pushing heavier than me, but you don't know how long he has started. Yeah. And maybe in the in two years time, that will be how people will be looking at you. Wow, this guy is so young, then he looks as good. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like yeah. relative or so, right? Yes, correct. 
like what they say, yeah. comparison is the thief of joy. Oh. Yeah. yeah, correct. Because you're making yourself unhappy. Man. Training should be a happy thing because if you look aesthetically good or you are healthy to like help your mom carry her groceries, that thing is really a job well done already. Yeah. Actually, just curious, right? How long do you spend for one session? I think around 1 to 1.30. 1 to 1.30. One, one hour to 1 hour 30. Oh. But some, some of it is not including the cardio. Yeah, yeah. Because, okay. yeah. Cardio is a different sector, mm-hmm. is, which is not really here. Yeah. Yeah. So I personally feel that training sessions should be between 45 minutes to 1 hour 30. Of course, mm-hmm. there are training sessions that go to like 2 hours. But as long as you can get the intensity that you want from it, then I think it'll be good enough. Okay. Anything more than three, I think it's a bit like yeah. man. Like, I feel like maybe the guy don't have to work or something. Like yeah, that's like <laughs> too free already. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe we can go on to talk about my diet. Cause I got Ooh. some, I want to see how my diet is like. Whether I can. Let's go. Yeah, so this is how my diet looks like on a day-to-day basis. I see that type. How much yeah. do you pay for the type? Uh? One meat, one veg. One meat, one veg is two seventy, two ninety. So I what? tell me, yeah. Oh, so cheap. It's quite cheap in SUTV. Yeah, so usually I get overnight oats with soya milk. Then after that, I'll, or I'll have bread with peanut butter for breakfast. Okay. Then after that, uh, I usually have lunch at that. And then dinner, I'll just be more free and easy. I just eat. But I'll try to eat more meat. Like. Otherwise, I'm going to be junk food like McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. Does this help to help me lose weight? Help you to lose weight or build muscle? Need to be clear, huh? Eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Build muscle, eh? Build muscle. Okay, we start building muscle. Build muscle. muscle. Okay, so... If I'm looking at building muscle, right, mm. I personally feel that, um, okay, based off your current physique, yeah. uh, maybe you need to eat a little bit more. Eat a little bit more. Yeah. So in terms of protein intake, maybe a slightly lower than what um, you are required. Oh, yeah. It's slowly like, correct, right? Slowly less. Uh, slightly less than what is required. Let me uh, see. I think less now. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, so... Probably all you have to do is just increase a little bit more protein and your cup intake. Okay. And you'll be able to build a decent muscle mass. Uh, yeah. Another okay. tip is that, for example, this is your daily meals, right? Yes. Especially on days that you're doing your cardio. Yeah. You can consider eating a little bit more carbs on that day so that it can power you through your workouts better. Oh. Because that day, maybe okay. you're burning more. But yeah. if you want to build more muscle, right, you don't want to burn off the excess uh, so you don't want to burn off like uh, you want you don't want to put yourself in a deficit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe you can eat a little bit more, make yourself feel better, dance better. Yeah. Yeah. When you're doing your runs. Okay. And that's a simple thing, lah. Mm. Then if you are talking about losing weight. weight, right? Um, actually, the fundamentals is about the same. You also need to eat a little bit more protein. So for example, like if you're eating this amount, right? Yes. And you're not losing weight. Okay. You're maintaining, mm. for example. Okay. Then maybe some of the factors is that. Uh, for your cup sauces or your fat intake, you can consider bringing it down a little bit more. Oh, uh, just a bit, just a bit. Yeah, then you see how the body reacts to. The okay, weight loss. so it's very just experimenting. Uh. I if I feel like I'm not getting what I want, I reduce a bit more. If I feel like it's too much, then I add back in. So just flip around. Correct. Okay. So it's not as complicated as what people always think. Now, of course, uh, this is based on your diet plan, lah. Uh. Okay, yeah. okay. But of course, usually I encourage people to understand like how nutrition or how calorie uh, counting is. Uh, sorry, I, I recommend people to do like understand how cal- calorie calculation is like because it's like a driving skill. Mm. Like uh, if you know how to drive that forever, you know how to drive. Right? So yeah, when you're overseas, when you are when you know how to calculate your calories, already, when you see the type of food that's in the store, then you will naturally know like what to eat. It just all comes in like all oh, the numbers here. Uh, then uh, like, eat, this, uh, eat that one, eat that one, eat that one. Yeah, correct. Okay. And people okay. say like, uh, it's very tough. Like, why do you have to torture yourself like that? Yeah. It's because like, for example, now you have a goal, man. Right? Like, mm. you want to lose weight. So, of course, throughout the period of you wanting to lose weight, you should stick to it. And after you achieve already, then I think it's a little bit okay to go free and easy on what, what your choices are. But of course, don't like, whack lah. Then later you go back to square one, then you have to do it again. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. 7,000 calories. 7,000 calories. 8,000. Binging from the 8,000 calories. Oh okay, God, okay. Worst, but I think some people won't know how to exactly calculate their calories also. So what would you recommend them mm. to use? Uh, there are a few methods that people can consider. So okay, I, I think you might have heard before, like some people like to use, like, like to do fasting. 
yeah. some people like to do um portion control yeah and then for myself usually i educate my clients to learn how to uh gauge their measurements of the food okay i just give an example lah. so how intermittent fasting works right okay not to like uh, create controversy. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Blade it out, blade it out. Cut, yeah. cut. <laughs> so, a lot of people don't understand. They thought like intermittent fasting is, uh, okay, I'll just explain first. Uh. Intermittent mm. fasting means that you have to eat at a certain time range. So maybe you skip mm. breakfast and lunch, then dinner, you eat. Mm. Correct? Mm. Yeah, so the original way of how intermittent fasting should work is you are eating three meals, correct? When you're going on a fast, then you skip your first meal and your second meal. Then your third meal, you are eating like how you are eating in the past. Yeah. So this will guarantee you to lose weight. Why? Because removing that two meals, right, you are essentially in a calorie deficit. And that's how intermittent fasting works. Mm. Yeah. Oh. But a lot of people don't understand. So they thought like, okay, I skip morning, breakfast, and lunch. Then in the last meal, then they whack eat the meal. Yeah, they oh. eat the same amount that they're eating for breakfast and lunch in dinner. So oh. this is where they... Where it's wrong lah, because they consume the same amount of calories. Yeah. And they suffer so much also. Okay. And so, uh, then the second one is what? What did I mention? Portion control. Portion control. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like your food choices, right? Yep. How do you know like you should, how, how do you gauge how to decrease the current food they're eating? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, if I use the Thai bung, for example. Yep. So, portion control meaning that currently like the rice is like one of your feet size, mm-hmm. right? If you want to be on a deficit, then based on your feet size, you cut half lock. Mm. So you remove that portion, then you continue with that diet, okay. on and on. So it's the same as your protein. Maybe if I say two fish, mm. then your protein has to be on like two fish size. Okay. Wow. So like double, double sodium. Sodium. Uh, Correct. So, so that is yeah. like a simple portion control that people can pick up without mm. having to understand calories. Okay. Then lastly, for calorie counting is, uh, usually I recommend clients to download this app called My Fitness Pal. Yeah. yeah. So the app is... I know some people don't like to use it, but I think it's a way to keep yourself accountable for what you eat because you're locking it in. Mm. Yeah, so estimate, like for example, if you go for uh, buying Thai fun, then yeah. uh, you can just type in like rice one serving, then you can just key inside the app. So that's where they can see like, oh, uh, in this rice, how much calories are there and what are the macronutrients that is inside. Mm. Yeah, mm. so that will help you. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I didn't get back on the app already. The app picked me and say, you haven't logged in your lunch today for very long already. They would yeah. say, hey, are you going to buy the premium version? Yeah, I'm going to go up there. It's okay, bro. I haven't <laughs> been logging by email. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, coach. <laughs> okay, it's okay. You pay yourself. I think, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I think, just to add on, like, if let's say, Zinka doesn't hit his calories, uh, so it doesn't hit his protein, sorry, mm-hmm. for that day, is it alright for him to supplement with protein powder? Because I think there's a lot of, like, controversy especially with parents and stuff like that sometimes they see their children eating drinking not eating sorry protein powder and they're like hey, this is not good for you so in your let's say experience mm. do you think it would be better to have as much clean food as possible in a sense like natural food like if you can eat chicken then you eat chicken breast mm. or if you need to supplement with protein powder then you just supplement on top of it okay so I think uh, the misconception is they say protein powder is bad yeah. Okay, it's bad to people that maybe have uh, health issues towards it. Mm. But you can think of a uh, protein powder as a form of supplement. Uh, yeah, it's a supplement, right? Like for example, um, today you're not drink. Take it as a take it as a like a normal consumption of food. So for example, if you need to drink milk, but because milk in terms of protein and fat levels are higher, then mm-hmm. you take the protein powder instead to fit into your meal. Of course, it's recommended to take it at a certain number of scoop per day. Because there are people who will question me, Ho Chin, if I need to eat 80 grams of protein per day, does it mean I take like 5 scoops of protein powder? Oh. <laughs> it's a life hack, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. True. But no, you, you can't do that. Yeah, because number one is not natural and the chemical substance does not allow you to like absorb entirely off that. So that's why you need to combine it with like natural sources of food. Yeah. Okay. So it's a substitute, but it's not a replacement. Mm. Yeah. So I need to take note of that. Uh, on the string. Right. So after exercising, right, how do we effectively rest and recover from it? Like, because like do you, like what's a good way to recover after a workout? How do you recover? How do I recover? Yeah. 
RP oftenest, right? <laughs> there is no magic to recovery. <laughs> like some people say, okay, I go to the ice bar. Like, yeah, 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 I got all this ice bath thing. Ice bath, I go to spa, I go to yeah. massage and all. I actually don't have. Do you stretch? I also don't stretch. Okay, it's not a good thing, like, like uh, people should stretch. Right? Yeah. I, I don't practice it, I'll be very honest. Okay, but if you're talking about recovery, it's very simple. Uh, You need to make sure that you have sufficient sleep. Mm. Second is, if you're required to rest on that day, then you rest. You don't even bother to go and, like, run or do push-up to, like, make up for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think recovery itself, being stress-free also help. Yeah, mm. these three pointers. Then, uh, does spa, ice bath, and going to the massage help? Uh, subjective? Yeah. Depends. Uh, it depends, right? Yeah. You, I mean, I don't have a bathtub at home, like, <laughs> then I can afford, like, <laughs> ice, bath. The ice bath. Correct, correct. Yeah, and uh, I'm <laughs> not a big fan of, like, massage, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like, I feel that after the massage, I get very sore, then the next day, I can't really, like, work out properly or so. Oh. Yeah, so it depends. I mean, there are, like, sports massage that help you recover better. But mm. I never really like tried one myself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, in terms of stretches, right? Uh, I do encourage people to do it, lah. Like, because for myself, um, my lifestyle is a bit packed, mm. so I will uh move out from locations to location very quickly. So I don't really do stretches. But of course, depending on what exercises group they are doing for that day, it's good to like stretch it out. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But let's say if you don't stretch it out, will it lead to let's say muscle imbalances? Or- Due uh, to like yes, more tight like, muscles? Uh, tightness in the muscle. Tightness yes, it passing sort of like so for example for someone who's always working, sitting on in front of the table, as uh, in front of the computer, then they realize that their back is very tight. Yeah, because they're always fixed in that position. So it's the mm-hmm. same as like training as well. So you want to encourage more stretches after that. Yeah, it's not it gets very stiff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it affects your lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe we can move on to the Q&A segment. I think we have a question from one of our friends. Let me just bring yeah. it up. Okay, so one of these questions was, I am currently 60... Eh, sorry, I am currently 70 KB. <laughs> That's it, wait. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Oh, is that him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just 75. <laughs> Which one is it? So yeah. I'm currently 70 KG and I'm looking to grow 10 KG in 4 months from now. I am a regular gym goer, but I do not track my calories. What is the best advice you can give for someone who is looking into bulk, not too dirty, this much in four months? Okay, uh, this is very simplified. Like, like I would say, number one, you need to know like how's your body profile like. Mm. Uh, depending on like what percent are you at in terms of your body fat level, it means that when you're looking in the mirror, do you feel that you are already more than fifteen percent? If you're more than fifteen percent, I don't encourage you continuing to like bulk. To another 10 kg and how should a bulk be like for example for this person uh, this person's uh, question is that if it's four months right you're on about 10 kg i'll be honest that's quite a lot of weight yeah mm-hmm. and it's not very recommended to put on so much weight at this short period of time oh. but if you do okay maybe if you're someone that's like leaner more skinnier mm. right then um i would say that pace yourself where you gauge that every month you're putting on about 2.5 kg to progress between. So it's like 4 months, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, and 2.5. And that's where you get to the goal of the 10 kg. Instead of like, a lot of people might think like, okay, I want to whack like 5 kg, then the initial part, then it goes. So a lot of the amount of food they're eating, regardless if it's like full cleaner, even if you're calculating it cleaner, you're still putting on a lot of fats in in that. Because... Energy that is not being used will be converted to fat. So in this case, if it's so much energy that he has to be, so if so much food that he's eating, then it will be hovering to fat. But again, to answer to this question, um, he should structure his. Sorry, what I mean is, uh, maybe for the choices of food that he's picking, should be lesser in fats. So, although I know he doesn't calculate calories, but um, it really depends on like what he's. Wow, like they have to explain it. <laughs> because I call it like number person, right? Okay, so usually I recommend I'll just put it in numbers first, then I see how this guy can do. If you want to can contact Ho Chin at uh Instagram no, 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 at no, Ho Chin. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. So basically, uh usually a person would need just about seventy grams of fats to to sustain their hormonal levels. Mm. So for his case, maybe he don't need to eat. 
increase his fat intake, he can focus on food that are slightly higher on protein and carbs, or maybe just carbs alone. Yeah, to help him to increase the weight. Yes. But just to add on on his question, you said like he could split it into 2.5 kg for four months. Mm -hmm. So how much muscle would he gain from this 2.5 kg? How much of it is fats and how much is it? Is it muscle? Oh, this one like skin. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so big, big man, I'm a scientist. <laughs> Tell how hard this guy is. I mean, like, through your experience. Okay. If it's a beginner, right? It's a beginner. You'll be surprised. Uh, they can grow about uh, 0. 0.5. 0 0.5 kg or 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 uh, yeah in this whole part and of course like fat I cannot exactly tell like it really depends on how the person is like yeah but if you're a seasoned athlete maybe you're only growing like 0 0.4 eh, 0 0.1 yeah across <laughs> this bulk oh. it's very little as you start as your training experience gets longer the ability to pull on more muscle is less uh, Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So if he's someone that is new, then probably he can see the most gains within this like four months. If he's training good, wrestling mm. well, yeah, eating accurately, then I think these four months will be awesome for him. But if he's someone that is seasoned, no one will bow like four k four months in ten kg. Right? <laughs> I, I mean, there is people who does that, but you'll see his physique will be chubbier, lor. Yeah, mm. he'll be slightly having more weight. Oh, about 0 0.1 kg for yeah. season. Yeah, that's why like uh, season athletes, they grow like 1 kg of muscle mass a year or oh. slightly lesser or between the range of 1.5 kg for a natural athlete. Uh. Yeah. It's insane. Is that what you say? I don't know. Like, it's, I, I think it's 3 times more. 3 times three more. Times oh, 3 times more. Yeah. more uh. The difference is so or big. 5 times more. Yeah, 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 it's so big. But it's objective. I'm not... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about much about like uh, steroids. Oh, then for your case, you put on like. What? I tried to yeah. think about <laughs> because okay, your last yeah. WFF Singapore grad but, fix order, like, the, the fix change is focus. visible. One, uh, mm. the one kg, although it seems little, mm. but when you see the muscle maturity and quality, you can tell one like, okay, this guy really got put on some muscle. Oh, what's the here? Yeah, but you don't go back by number, la, just to really care about the number. I understand. Yeah. But taking that into context, how much have you changed from your last show, which was WFF Asia Grand Prix, which was in Japan? In, yeah. Now, uh, now I can't tell where I like quite chubby also. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he needs to take off his shirt. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I take off my shirt, I think with camera. Like, <laughs> got three camera, all three camera guys. Crack, crack, crack. Crack of the power. Crack cause of the power. bro. <laughs> <laughs> All cuts were enemy then. <laughs> Got them. Okay, okay. I think on to our next question was. Okay, for some people, some people may not choose to gym because they feel that gyming will cause them to put on a lot of muscle mass. Mm. So that's why they resort to cardio instead. Mm. So what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so if you're someone who wants to stay <coughs> stagnant, or like you, you're worried that you're becoming big, right? Mm. Then you can follow what Ting Kai did. So he does 12.5 for child preps, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure that when you're in the gym, you're training around that rep range that you're always doing. So you won't have to worry about like putting on more mass. But it's mm. not as easy as you think, like to put on more mass. And I always encourage like everyone, regardless uh, if you like to do spin, yoga, or like Ooh. doing for CrossFit mm. or anything like that. Yeah, always go for some form of strength training or some weight training because mm. the more it helps with your joint. Uh, and doesn't mean you are spending like one hour in the gym means you'll become a bodybuilder. It's an entirely different aspect. Yeah, so lifting weights. Uh, If you have more muscle, you can eat more food. And I think that's what everyone wants. Yeah, to be able to enjoy the luxury exactly. of eating more foods. So it's okay to like uh go to the gym and train. And maybe like for ladies, because I, I think uh, even for myself, I have clients that tell me, hey, I don't want to do too much like um upper body training. I scared later mm. my, my arms will look like you. Yeah. Then I was like, no, you will never look like me. <laughs> <laughs> you will never look like me. <laughs> Oh, okay. give up. <laughs> no la, no la. Just kidding, just so kidding. Game, two years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still two years. Still two years. Maybe uh, got secret sauce or not. Uh, huh? 
Yeah, you can go for a massage, lah. Maybe the massage. Okay. 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 Our human anatomy, like human anatomy, like it's impossible for a lady to put on as much muscle as compared to a guy. Yeah, so I feel that if a ladies, if ladies go to the gym, typically they will look better lah for sure. Hmm. Yeah, depending on what they want. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong. I mean, to to go to the gym. Yeah. Speaking about the gym, I guess we're going to go there very soon. Yes. To yep. have a test run and to see how. See how things are. Yeah, correct. See how my chain and see how I can improve my chain. Chest will improve a lot. The chest is the strongest. So you'll be training half naked, right? No lah. Topless lah. Topless. Later, all the mirrors, all the windows, all the mirrors crack, and then <laughs> the chin cannot use. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So later we'll be going to the gym. Maybe we're doing chest, a chest and a back exercise, and then. Uh, you also be telling me how I can improve on my form. Yeah, or maybe some time. techniques that you can make your training a little bit harder. Okay. Okay. So excited. <laughs> maybe working here also oh. for shirt too. Uh. Huh? Why you want posing to session? Do shirt, hey, bro. posing what session. Hey, posing session. No posing session, bro. <laughs> Think I can do a pose. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's, it's not a one pack. It's a one pack. <laughs> I want pack. Know, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think that's all for our podcast session. Thank you, Ho Ching, for coming down and giving us this sharing. Okay. And we are off to the gym, and we will see you there in a bit.